modern advertising sneaked its way into basically everything, whether that's movies, phone apps, websites, or anything else out there, most people have basically just come to accept that advertising is just a part of your daily life. And recently, the QT GUI framework started offering the QT digital advertising platform, which will allow developers to embed ads directly into their desktop and mobile QT apps. Now, I know exactly what you're about to do, and wait for just a moment. Don't leave an angry comment saying, oh, this is horrible, and advertising's evil, and this is going to destroy KDE because KDE is based on QT. Wait just a moment, because I want to explain why this doesn't really matter and isn't actually going to change anything for developers who just didn't care about ads anyway. But before I can do that, I need to show you what the plan actually is. So what is QT Digital Advertising? It is a ready-made plugin to install from your QT maintenance tool instance, allowing you to connect your application to a dedicated supply-side platform, that being basically their ad network, the way they're distributing the ads, with the tool, you can manage and run monetization campaigns on your Qt-based application. Our focus is to fill an existing gap in the Qt framework for developers using Qt for mobile and desktop applications. We want to enable the easy integration of advertising. Our offering aims to disrupt the IoT industry, enabling new business models and business cases that before were not possible. We enable Qt users to insert advertising as a native component to complex user interfaces, and this right here is basically an example of how it would look. So this, basically all of it here is just the regular application, and this bit right here, that is the ad. Now in this situation, the ad definitely does stand out, but I think that is definitely preferred, because this makes it so it's really obvious that what you're looking at is an ad, and not a regular part of the application, so people don't accidentally click on it, thinking that it's, you know, another page they can go to. As for the mobile version, it's pretty much exactly the same, it's just, you know, in a mobile layout. Now, there are two very important things to take away from this statement. Easy integration of advertising, and native component. So you may not have already realized this, but regardless of whether you're using QT, GTK, Electron, or anything else out there, you can already integrate ads into it. So go to GitHub right now and type in QT AdMob. So AdMob is a service provided by Google. It is very similar to AdSense, but it's for mobile apps rather than the web like AdSense is. Why they split them up into two separate things, I don't know, I'm sure there's some management reason for it, maybe some technical reason, but that is just how it is. And what you'll notice is some of these libraries have existed for a very, very long time, some of them close to 10 years. While that is the case, it is also true that QT Digital Advertising is a first-party plugin. And when you have something be first party, the documentation is likely going to be better and people are going to be more willing to actually recommend it over some third party solution. So it'll almost certainly increase the usage of advertising in QT applications. But I don't think it's going to be for the applications that you guys actually care about. So let's consider a similar case, the case of Electron apps. While Electron doesn't have a first party advertising solution, Electron is basically a glorified Chromium browser. So integrating any of the existing solutions is basically the easiest thing you're going to be doing. Now, how many Electron apps have you seen with embedded advertising? If we say proprietary applications, you've probably seen a few out there. But what about if we're talking about open source applications? Probably it's non-zero, but I certainly haven't seen any. And I've looked at more software than most of the people out there. <laughs> like, if I haven't seen any, that's not to say that it doesn't exist. That's to say that it seems like it's very, very uncommon. And why is this the case? Because there's obviously no technical difference between it being open source and proprietary. There's got to be another reason. And that is the value structure that generally exists around open source and free software applications. Frankly, many people in the FOSS space just don't like advertising. They find it annoying to be constantly blasted with all of this noise to buy random things. But that's sort of the minor concern. The much bigger concern is over data privacy. And the only way to effectively advertise to users 
is to collect data. Yes, you can do anonymized advertising like Brave and all that does, but usually people aren't going to give you money for that unless your plan is to just throw out a wide net to everybody and try to catch as many suckers as possible. But for every other advertiser, there is no arguing about this. The most effective way to do advertising is to target ads. Companies like Google wouldn't be spending so much money collecting all this user data if just throwing ads out to random people got them better results. But keep in mind the mindset we work from in FOSS. There was a long period of time, and there's still people that think this nowadays, that Ubuntu is spyware at the level of something like Windows 10 or Windows 11, because when you installed it at that time, it had a built-in Amazon web search app. That's all it was. You could uninstall it, you never had to use it, it only collected data if you typed into it, but it was spyware. Obviously, FOSS developers should be paid for their work, and in most cases, donations are not a viable way to actually fund the development of an application outside of doing, like, a bunch of part-time side gigs. But I don't think that any sane FOSS developer would take a step into the direction of advertising, considering that if their primary users are other FOSS users they're probably going to lose more by integrating advertising in the amount lost from donations than they would actually gain from the advertising itself. If you don't think that's the case, go back and look at what happened with Audacity. Now, Audacity is a special case because a lot of their users are not FOSS users, but the FOSS users in particular, when they decided to try to add telemetry, even though telemetry wasn't going to be added in the version that most people on Linux actually had, people freak the hell out about that. And there was a mass amount of people who left that application to go and make their own forks. Those forks are basically dead now. But there was a lot of people who were like, yeah, we're just not going to use Audacity anymore. And we're done with it. And when you're making an application in a space that has a lot of other competing applications, let's say, for example, a... I don't know, let's say a terminal. Let's say you have a terminal based on QT and you add ads into it. Well... There's, like, hundreds of other terminals, it's pretty easy to go find another one. But if you're a developer making proprietary desktop and mobile apps, and you already had a policy of adding ads into what you make, well, you were already adding ads into what you make, so nothing's really changed here. Now you just have ads in another format. Maybe if you weren't using Qt before, now you actually are going to use Qt, and this actually is a good thing for Qt. Maybe some of those developers who are making proprietary applications will actually go and donate to Qt and help fund its development, so everybody who's not dealing with the ads actually does get a better product. While adding this ad support might seem like a massive waste of effort from a FOSS developer perspective, Unlike something like GTK, which is also a cross-platform framework, Qt actually sees quite a bit of corporate usage. From my understanding, unlike GTK, which is Linux first, Qt actually works well on other platforms. And some of these users want certain features that people in the FOSS world, the Linux world, whatever you want to call it, may not actually want. In which case, you just don't have to use them. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you think I'm wrong and you think that a bunch of FOSS applications are just going to start adding in advertising, I would love to hear why. I don't think that's going to be the case, but I'm more than happy to hear a good explanation. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these people over here and go support the channel, I've got a Patreon subscribe to the Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a Tea, a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays, and that's going to be it for me. So, I'm out.